staff for the remainder of the day and again on Memorial Day until noon. At that time, the flag of our country will be raised to full staff and will fly unencumbered to show that the price our fallen comrades paid was not in vain. Additionally, Congress established the National Moment of Remembrance for 3 o'clock p.m. on Memorial Day to pause for one minute. The Moment of Pause is an act of national unity in which all Americans honor those who died in service to our nation. In 2012, our nation launched a 13-year-long commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War to ensure that every veteran, family, caregiver, and survivor impacted by the difficult years in Vietnam feels our nation's gratitude for their sacrifice. GMC honors this commitment as we recognize the Vietnam Veterans 50th Homecoming Anniversary during our Military Heritage Week and Hall of Heroes induction ceremony. We pledge to never forget the eternal sacrifice of your loved ones and what you have sacrificed for the nation. Georgia Military College welcomes you all to today's parade. In particular, we welcome those of you who have lost a loved one in the service to our country. Today we pay tribute to the sacrifices and memories of those heroes. Your host for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General William B. Caldwell IV, and we would also like to recognize a few of our distinguished guests. The Honorable Blake Tillery, Senator, Georgia District 19. Senator Rick Williams and the Honorable Ken Vance. George Hogan, Chairman, Georgia Military College Board of Trustees. Mr. Henry Craig and Mr. Johnny Westmoreland, Baldwin County Commissioners. Colonel Tom Torrance, immediate past president of the Gene Sai Alumni Association and 2022 Hall of Heroes inductee. Already formed on Grant Parade are members of the Georgia Military College Band. Today marks the last parade for many of our junior college and prep cadets who will move on and continue to serve our nation after graduation. The band commander is Cadet Captain Tucker Ivey. The company first sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Caden Baker. Our nation's colors of the 144th Corps of Cadets are now marching on the Grand Parade. The regiment comprises of two junior college battalions, two prep school battalions, who form on the field to begin this morning's ceremony.
The Cadet Regiment will ask them. Cadet Major Bruce Fargo, director of the band, is on absence call and is conducting the absence march to center herself on the regiment to begin today's ceremony. The commander of troops is now moving to the front of the field with their staff to receive the formation from the adjutant. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Cadet Colonel Grace Goodman. Sound off is a ceremonial tradition that dates back to crusades when military bands marched and countermarched before units designated to take part in the upcoming battle. Again, welcome to Georgia Military College on the 2023 Memorial Day Parade. Today, we defer the playing of ruffles and flourishes to honor those men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to include the 88 GMC alumni who have given their lives in service to their country from World War II to the present day. Please stand for a moment of silence, followed by the firing of a ceremonial round from our GMC Pac-75 howitzer and the playing of echoing caps. To our guests in uniform and our veterans as desired, Please run to the hand salute. For our guests in civilian clothes, please place your right hand over your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please bow your heads.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The Commander of Troops has ordered the colors to come forward for presentation. The term colors originated in around the 17th century, in the days when armies first adopted the regimental system. It was then decided that each regiment should be assigned a color. These colors not only made each regiment easy to identify, but also served as a rallying point on the battlefield. Today we refer to our nation's flag, the state flag, and the command flag as colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to play with the National Anthem. For our guests in uniform and our veterans as desired, please run the hand salute. For our guests in civilian clothes, please place your right hand over your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The mission of GMC is to produce educated citizens and contributing members of society in an environment conducive to the development of the intellect and character of its students. Service leaders are those individuals who collaborate, mentor, dedicate personal time, and give of themselves for the pure and unselfish betterment of others. They are regarded as selfless, humble, and generous. President Caldwell and our special guest, the Honorable Blake Tillery, will now present the Distinguished Order of the Serpent Leader Award. This award recognizes character excellence for those members of the GMC family who have volunteered at least 100 hours of community service in one year. This morning, we recognize those individuals who have donated at least 200 hours of community service. Please hold your applause until all awards have been presented. This morning, we congratulate... Sean Boyce. The third award for the Servant Leader Medal recognizes volunteers who have donated at least 300 hours of community service. This morning, we congratulate... Saya Patel. The fourth award for the Servant Leader Medal recognizes volunteers who have donated at least 400 hours of community service. This morning we congratulate Joshua Craddock.
The sixth award for the Servant Leader Medal recognizes volunteers who have donated at least 600 hours of community service. This morning, we congratulate Thomas Ross. The seventh award for the Servant Leader Medal recognizes volunteers who have donated at least 700 hours of community service. This morning we congratulate Madison Kennedy. The eighth award for the Servant Leader Medal recognizes volunteers who have donated at least 800 hours of community service. This morning, we congratulate James Ross. The ninth award for the Servant Leader Medal recognizes volunteers who have donated at least 900 hours of community service. This morning, we congratulate Dana Carisha. The Association of Military Colleges and Schools of the United States Servant Leadership Award is based on a cadet's proven performance in leadership and individual accomplishments while attending GMC. The recipients are Justin Jeff, GMC Prep School. Josephine Buckland, GMC Junior College. Please join us in a round of applause to all of these cadets for their outstanding civil leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of Georgia Military College, Lieutenant General William B. Caldwell IV. Well, first of all, let me just start off saying to everybody that joined us this morning, thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us celebrate these men and women these young boys and girls you see before you today. Examples of what we all want America to be like. So thank you very much. Let's, everybody out there in the formation this morning, let's give all your parents, your grandparents, your friends that are here a big round of applause. Go me. Okay, out there. And oh my gosh, did we get great weather or what? I think for all of us that have come to a May Parade, we know what it's like. Normally the sun's up about this time, it's scorching hot, somewhere around 84 degrees. The heat has come in, the humidity has taken over, and we're just sitting here sweating to death. So this is a wonderful morning for everyone, so thank you. Listen, I'm, in, I'm incredibly honored to be able to introduce our guest speaker this morning. We are real fortunate that the chairman, or Senator Blake Tillery, agreed to come and join us. He had to make a long drive really this morning to get here. Sir, thank you very much for coming. I think many of you know he, he epitomizes service to our nation. You know, he himself was involved in his own county commission where he was as the chairman of their county commission. He has had numerous civic activities and clubs he's been involved in and is still involved in today. He juggles as a family that many of us do where his wife's a doctor, a medical doctor, and she's working, he's got a young child he's trying to, to work too, and then he himself 
he actually has a job too and has to go to work too. So, uh, Senator Tillery, we are incredibly grateful you made this trip here today to join us, and we look forward to your remarks. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the kind words. I uh, actually feel it there are in, inappropriate. Uh, I'm actually impressed and honored by you uh, being here this morning and seeing you. One thing you will know, because now you have a, a military background of sorts, some of you will go further than others, is that civilians will always be concerned and scared that they will accidentally break protocol. So remember that forever. <laughs> but I'd like to say thanks. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant General Caldwell. Uh, my very good friend, Brigadier General uh, Christine, thank you for being here. Chairman Hogan, uh, Representative Vance, and uh, my friend in the Senate, Chairman Rick Williams, thank you, and other officials who are present. The members of our armed services, past and uh, present and active, families of our armed service personnel, friends of our cadets, and then you, cadets. <clears throat> Where did Memorial Day begin? The history of Memorial Day has long been debated. Most begin it, believe it began as something originally called Decoration Day, a day that served as a time for families, friends, and loved ones to decorate the graves of fallen soldiers. In the 1860s, news reports from Warrington, Virginia, Savannah, Georgia, and Boldsburg, Pennsylvania can be found from communities coming out in mid to late May to decorate the graves of those they had lost. Bowlesburg, Pennsylvania actually uses one of these articles to this day to promote itself as the beginning of Memorial Day. In 1865, following the death of President Lincoln, these still unofficial Memorial Day services swelled enormously. News reports from Charleston, South Carolina report a parade to honor 257 re-interned soldiers, including 10,000 recently freed African Americans among the parade marchers. By the end of the 1860s, what had previously been a more southern affair began spreading into the north and midwestern states like Illinois and Pennsylvania. Dolestown, Pennsylvania began holding a parade in 1868 that it now claims is the oldest continuously running Memorial Day parade. Folks in Rochester, Wisconsin like to remind their friends in Dolesville, however, that Rochester's parade began in 1867, one year prior. The following year, in 1868, Major General John A. Logan declared a Decoration Day should be observed on May 30th of that year to decorate war graves. By the 1870s, most states had adopted Memorial Day as a state holiday, though some, including Michigan, still considered and referred to this as Decoration Day. So with all of these dates, places, and towns, where did Memorial Day begin? The U.S. National Park Service actually attributes the beginning of Memorial Day to our state, to a city still synonymous with our nation's military, to Columbus. There, citizens from the community, mostly women, still suffering the effects of poverty and war, could not raise enough money for a memorial stone to be erected for their fallen. The city didn't have the funds, nor could they afford to have many of their fallen disinterred and reinterred around their hometowns. But there was something they could do. They could decorate the graves of fallen soldiers within their reach, which they did in 1866. We recognize this as the beginning of Memorial Day. The preferred name became Memorial Day following World War II and was finally declared the official name of the federal holiday by Congress some 101 years after these first celebrations in Columbus. See, cadets, you'll realize that sometimes Congress is the last bunch to get it. <laughs> In 1971, Congress moved Memorial Day from May 30th to the last day in May, which brings us here today. But then again, why are we here today? Is it because a little community in West Georgia didn't have enough money to build a monument to its fallen? Is it because Major General Logan ordered those under his command to decorate the graves of the fallen? Is it because Congress declared a federal holiday for the last Monday in May? No. It's because inside of each one of you, in each one of us, there's a longing, a yearning, a desire to repay some debt we owe to some other, perhaps and quite often someone we never met, but one we know nonetheless by their actions and deeds, proved they loved us by doing what the Gospel of John says, shows us how to compare the types of love. It reads, greater love hath no man 
Then he laid down his life for his friends. Those we honor today showed this love. You say it simply, duty, honor, love of country. And that drive that stands up the hairs on your neck when you hear the battle hymns of our nation's service branches, the pride you feel when you see our flag, the pride we see when we see our now aging veterans who gave their blood, their sweat, and their youth to preserve our nation from tyranny abroad. That is the pride that we see in you. That's what compels us to be here today. And I'm honored to be here with you. Thank you very much. In recognition of his servant leadership and strong support to Georgia Military College, his unwavering love and support to the citizens of Georgia, and an appreciation for his visit here today, the Honorable Blake Tillery is being presented with the GMC Sabre by the Regimental Commander, Cadet Colonel Gooden, Chairman of the GMC Board of Trustees, Mr. George Hogan, and President Caldwell on behalf of the Corps of Cadets. Senator Tillery epitomizes the concepts of certain leadership and character that we want our students to emulate. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Cadet Ava Ray Stasny recites the Cadet Prayer. Please bow your heads. Almighty God, General of all life's forces, Commander of Nature, we praise thy holy name. Visit thy presence upon us and all former GMC cadets. Reinforce us in our quest for knowledge, integrity, and leadership. Instill in us humanitarianism and bless our enemy, whoever he might be. Extinguish from our daily lives great and envy and make us champions of right and ladies and gentlemen of honor. May we glorify thy name in victory and be courageous in defeat. Help us ever to think first of our comrades and secondly of ourselves and always of thee. Guide our footsteps and cleanse our minds. May we be first in the service of our country and first in thy service. Lead us, O Lord, that we might lead. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Regimental Commander of the 144th Corps of Cadets and Commander of Troops for today's parade is Cadet Colonel Grace Goodness. Members of the Regimental Staff are Cadet Major Brees Fargo, Regimental S1 and Adjutant, Cadet Major Taylor Britton, Regimental S2, Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Levi Bohan, Regimental S3, Cadet Captain Anthony Johnson, Regimental S4, Cadet Command Sergeant Major Ray Rose, Regimental Command Sergeant Major. The GMC Preparatory Band is commanded by Cadet Hunter Wright, Puppy First Sergeant, Cadet First Sergeant.
Seltzer Company is committed by Cadet Captain Julia Yanakos. Company First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Dalton Haddock.
Barbie song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 144th Corps of Cadets Memorial Day Parade. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Great.